Greetings survival horror fans, EQA Nostalgia here to talk to you guys about Resident Evil Outbreak. Some of you may remember the previous video I did about Outbreak, it caused quite a stir. There were rumors going around about Outbreak HD being in development by Creazen Studios, who I was leaving um, nameless at the time because I didn't, I didn't want to blow anybody up. At this point, the, uh, the public has put two and two together and, and it's been that way for months, so I don't feel bad saying that uh, Creation Studios is who I have suspected who has been behind this the entire time. And that's why I flipped out when I found out that there was an informant and I was able to put two and two together because I, I did know that this was a, a legit company that was working on a spiritual successor to Resident Evil Outbreak. So everything just kind of clicked. So you guys can see why I was flipping shit at the time. Now just real quick, a quick background on that, I was actually covering a game and I was talking to Creas and Studios, they were giving me footage of it before anybody else, which was my first time actually working with a developer in that way and it was amazing. And uh, I was really hyped for it and then it just went quiet, they got quiet, they weren't responding to me, they weren't doing anything, their Twitter went quiet and it was very suspicious. I went from directly talking to a gentleman over there, Andrew who was very much in, uh, in tune with what I was doing because I was helping to promote their game and, and their small independent studio. So I was helping to push a little bit of an effort there for their Steam Greenlight. The game got greenlit. I was happy about it. Everybody was happy about it. We all celebrated in the comments section. It was awesome. It was moving forward. Uh, so it was really frustrating when things just went dark. I had a direct line to them through email and through Steam on my friends list on uh, Twitter and I don't think I had them on Facebook but I had a lot, there was a lot of communication there that all of a sudden just ceased. Everybody was getting pissed off. If you go and you check out the, uh, the Steam group you'll see people getting mad saying hey how come you announced this game you haven't done anything what the fuck and it was very uncharacteristic of them to just completely go quiet like that so it was highly suspicious and then once i had found out uh, that they were supposedly approached at the time that they were their silence all of a sudden made a whole lot of sense when i wrapped that video up though i'm not gonna lie to you guys i was shitting my pants because if i'm the guy who's saying outbreak is coming back and that video got a, a pretty decent amount of views it started a bit of a hype train if that turned out to just be a rumor, even to this day, even right now, we're not 100% positive. If it turned out to be a rumor, it would make me look absolutely horrible. Uh, and I, I really, I debated on even posting that video. Because even, even the most tiniest little monicum of doubt had me just like, ah, oh, this could completely destroy my entire channel and nobody will ever trust me again. So I've been shitting my pants the entire time. Well, now I've got a little bit more news for everybody. A little bit more evidence. I'm going to further perpetuate my own doom if this turns out to not be true. But I'm going to share this with you guys. So I suppose I should start here all the way back to January. You can see somebody asking Creation Studios, are you working on an HD game? No comment with a winky face. Yeah, so that right there, that's that's pretty nice. That's that's good to see that. That, <laughs> that kind of relieved my anxiety a little bit when I saw that. I was like, oh. Because why would they even say anything? If somebody reached out to them, typically the response would just be to ignore them. There wouldn't be a response at all. But no comment with a winky face, that's that's actually pretty awesome. Now we did have somebody ask them uh, a similar question about a month ago and it was going around on uh, the, the uh, outbreak group that's on Facebook. People are saying, eh, I don't know if this is legit now because they're denying it now. Well, yeah, they're going to deny it. <laughs> they're going to deny it. I mean, I'm sure as soon as they made that comment with the winky face, the no comment with the winky face, they're just saying, no, we really shouldn't have done it. That pretty much confirms it. Unless they're just trolling. I guess it's possible that they could be trolling. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things that I think it pretty much seals the deal. Next up, what's this? Capcom acknowledges us on Facebook? When the hell has that ever happened? Can anybody post an image or something in the comment section of when they actually acknowledge the fact that the Outbreak community even fucking exists? That's right, they came out and they said, Hey, happy anniversary! It's It's been so long since this game came out. Out of nowhere! They never said that ever, not once before, that I have ever seen. And as you can see on the bottom, 22,000 people had thumbed that up. That right there is in direct competition with a post that they left for Resident Evil 4 and pretty much everything else on that page for the last several months 
most of it doesn't even come close to 22,000 likes. We're talking like 1,000, 2,000 likes for uh, Umbrella Core and, and shit like that. Uh, most of their posts don't have that much interaction. And Capcom does take a look at those likes, so the community definitely did the right thing by getting behind that one. Everybody who thumbed that up, everybody who spoke out, thank you for doing that. This is what we need to be doing to show Capcom that we give a shit. And evidently they took notice because they posted this to their website and they even said that there was an incredible amount of feedback. There's a lot of comments here. So they, they even bothered to put this on their website in their news feed. This is good news, everybody. And in case you weren't able to discern that on your own, this is really good news. Capcom is actually acknowledging that this exists. Why would they be doing this? Okay, this, this would not make any sense. Maybe they're saying, oh, hey, check this out. But right around the time when this is speculated to, uh, to be getting announced at E3, they're starting to really ramp up and, and talk about Outbreak. As I stated, I've never seen them talk about Outbreak in the past. It, to me, I always looked at it that Capcom just looked at Outbreak as a failure and they wanted to forget about it. And now all of a sudden they're starting to talk about it. So what I'm doing here by showing you guys this evidence and the evidence that I gathered way back is just kind of showing you that I've, I had something to go off of when I brought this to everybody. I wasn't just in it for the views because I've gotten a lot of shit, especially on the, uh, the Resident Evil subreddit on, uh, on Reddit. I got a lot of shit from those guys. And I have to say, I can't really blame everybody because we've been led down this path before and we've been lied to. And it sucks. Everybody's everybody's just kind of bracing for the worst. But this really does look legit, guys. It looks like we're getting Outbreak, and it looks like we're getting it pretty soon. If this doesn't happen, I'm going to be just as pissed off as everybody else. And more so because I, I put my reputation on the line by coming out and saying, Hey, this is, this is most likely happening, and if it doesn't happen, I'm an asshole. Everybody's going to call me an asshole. Everybody's going to go to my videos and they're going to point their fingers at me and call me an asshole. So it's uh, I want everybody to understand the risk that I took just coming out and saying this. So it's not something that I would do just on a whim. I believe that the evidence here is really, really strong in favor of an HD remake of at least the first game. But they're, they're showing the second one as well. So hopefully they get both files together. Um, that elusive third file... I don't, I don't know if we'll ever see anything from that, guys. It would be really nice if we did, but I think we're going to be lucky if we even get uh, two of these bundled together, Resident Evil Outbreak 1 and 2 together on one disc. Uh, hopefully they do that for like $30, $40, and hopefully they include online support. Now, when I first covered this story way back, I had mentioned that the people working on it said it was really easy to get past the, uh, the snap online service that was giving a lot of people a lot of shit who've been trying to uh, to make fan servers they said they got past it really easily so hopefully that was legit as well hopefully they are going to be bringing the servers online for the game because if they just bring it out and it's an hd remake and it doesn't go online i gotta be honest i'm not gonna give a shit about it really i'm not gonna care because just like everybody else out there i can fire up an emulator and i can play it on an emulator i own the disc it's not illegal for me to do that i can just fire up an emulator and it looks pretty good on the computer it looks it looks like it's pretty well upscaled um so i could do that anytime i want i don't i don't really care about that what i care about is the online functionality even if it stayed in like 480p or whatever the hell it was its native resolution was as long as it went online that would be good enough for me. So that's what I'm looking forward to most. Hopefully Capcom knows that and they don't just uh, just come out with Outbreak not online. I don't think they would be that stupid, but I don't know, man. I, I've, Capcom has done some really dumb shit in the past. Uh, recently, I, I have to give them credit because I think they've been doing some really good stuff with uh, these remakes and, and reboots and shit like that. Well, not reboot, but uh, remasterings, if you will. So there you have it. That's uh, that's everything that I've gathered so far. I think I think it's looking pretty damn good. And guess what, guys? We got a little bit over a month to figure out if this is going on or not. If we don't hear about this at E3, which is a little over a month away, at that point I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb down into like a dark hole and I'm never gonna post a video again out of sheer embarrassment. I'm gonna find a manhole in Raccoon City. I'm gonna climb down into the sewer. And I'm going to sacrifice myself to a giant spider because that's what I deserve if this turns out to not be real. But where I stand right now, in my mind, this is a done deal. Right now, I'm thinking 
is it going to have online? Is it going to be in disc form or is it just going to be digital? Because a lot of people want the discs. I personally would rather have the discs. Is it going to be on Steam? Is it going to be exclusive to PlayStation? I highly doubt it's going to be exclusive. But is it going to make it to Steam at least? Where is this going to go in terms of how many platforms it's on? How successful will it be? These are the things I'm thinking about because there's a lot of people that might be voting, upvoting on news stories for this. But how many people are actually going to buy it? We have to have a really good turnout. If this comes out, and I'm pretty positive it's going to, you guys really need to get behind it, and you need to buy it and support it and show Capcom that it, that this game wasn't a failure. It was just a victim of its time. It came out when online gaming wasn't that prevalent. Co-op online gaming really wasn't that prevalent at all, and it was just a lot harder for people to get into online games. You had, you had to have the network adapter for the PlayStation 2. Resident Evil 4 had come out on GameCube right around the same time, roughly, so you had them, they were kind of splitting up their own audience, which is something that EverQuest had done. EverQuest is guilty of doing the same thing with EverQuest 2. We now know that that was a big mistake, splitting up your fan base. So there were a lot of things going against this game, and I really don't think it had anything to do with the quality of the game. I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that the game was, was bad. I just think that it had poor sales because it was a victim of its time. It really was ahead of its time. But right now, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. Do you think I'm full of shit? What do you think of the evidence I've brought forth in the past couple of videos? Get vocal down in the comment section. If you like this video, please remember to leave a thumbs up. I thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.